So but how's everything you. going? It's good. Yeah. Just uh, getting up, getting some coffee and, uh, you know. I do the same live, too. <laughs> living another uh, COVID day, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, it seems like you've been uh, keeping busy with those killer tunes you've been releasing. Yeah. You know, that's the, uh, I guess that's the, the positive part of a, you know, unique situation is uh, being able to have a lot more time to work on things that I normally wouldn't have the time to do, you know, on the road and stuff like that. So um, in a way, you know, it's been really good just kind of writing all the time, getting to do stuff that, um, you know, is, is much different than the band that I normally play with. So, Right. Uh, New Year's Day, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, James Renshaw was in that as well for like a year, right? Yeah, yeah, he was. So him and I are both kind of from like the Florida area, like down south. And um, we played in a bunch of like local cover bands together before the New Year's Day thing. And then um, I think after the first tour that I did with New Year's Day, we were uh, looking for a new drummer. So I was like, yeah, you got to check out my my buddy James. And they loved him. So he came out and did a tour with us after that. And uh, yeah, he killed it for sure. So. Yeah, um, I was listening to Stampede and Diesel Fuel, and they're, those are like some fun songs. I don't know if you've seen um, the Pink Floyd Laser Light Show. I haven't, no. Yeah, when I was listening to your songs, I was like, I can picture like a laser light show going with the music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we might have to get you to, uh, to be the lighting person, I guess. Huh? <laughs> but no, um, yeah, that's... Uh, it's, it's crazy that you mentioned that. I know when I saw Steve Vai, like, do the instrumental thing, like, you would think with some of the instrumental guys, they're just so focused on music and not as much on maybe the show or something, but Steve Vai would, like, dress up in these, like, uh, he had this one song that he would, like, put on this, like, uh, robot costume, and he had, like, lasers pointing out of his fingers. Oh I thought that was, like, That's the coolest crazy. thing ever. <laughs> yeah. I have seen that's uh, on YouTube. <laughs> Oh yeah, it is. It is. It's something called, I think it's called like the ultra zone or something like that. But yeah, it definitely helped uh, translate the song even better, I guess, at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for your songs, do you kind of just jam and come up with things on the spot or do you kind of like hear it in your head first and then try to replicate it? Um, it kind of depends. I, uh, I do, I kind of like to hear things in my head a lot of the times too, like without an instrument I kind of um, I, I enjoy it a little bit more if it just kind of hits me from like a you know in my subconscious kind of thing where it's not like me trying to do anything particular on guitar it's more or less just like the the universe just hitting you with a, with a certain idea so I think it's it's cooler that way but um, there are times when I'm just sitting down with my instrument jamming and I just stumble across something and that's when the, the handy uh voice memos come into play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness that's for technology. My, oh, for sure. And that's kind of my process. I'll, uh, I'll kind of just make a bank of ideas. So it, you're basically kind of capturing lightning in a bottle over multiple uh, periods of time. So that, because, uh, you know, if, if you told me, you know, write, a, write an awesome riff right now, do it on the spot. It's like, I wouldn't know. <laughs> So, you know, pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just doesn't work like that. So it's always in the most random moments when things just hit you. You could be just like taking a walk or doing the dishes and you're like an idea just pops in your head and you're like, oh, that, that's a cool idea. So yeah. And then you just hope you don't forget it before you can <laughs> like record it or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's and that's the whole thing with the voice memos is because it, it takes too long to get your computer and sometimes you're not around a computer and um, but you always have your phone on you. So that's the easiest thing to do is just pull out the voice memos, record it, and then you can put it in, you know, Logic or Pro Tools or whatever. So. And you've been doing this for a long time since you were seven, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I first started playing guitar when I was around like seven or eight, but I was kind of just learning um, like just songs back in the day, like just, you know, Hendrix or Stevie Ray Vaughan, stuff like that. I didn't really... I didn't really sit down and practice. It was more or less just kind of like having fun, learning songs. And it wasn't until I was probably about 17 when I started getting paid to play like in local cover bands that I was wanting to take it a lot more serious. And then I kind of started sitting down and practicing more. And um, So, you know, like any other kid, you go through phases where, you know, I was playing sports and stuff like that too. So you're 
kind of like finding your way through life. But uh, as I got older, it just it, it was always a you know an itch to to keep playing guitar and trying to get better. So as I got older, it, it got more and more addicting. Right. And how would you say Musicians Institute kind of helped you with guitar playing? Is it more like helping you with your performances or networking, a little bit of both? Yeah, for sure. Like all of the above. It's um, MI was just such an amazing uh, place, just full of incredible teachers, uh, first and foremost. They were just like world-class musicians. And, um, you know, it's um, it's definitely worth the money because you're, you're being put in front of the best people there are and and on top of that you are like in the prime there's no more prime spot than right in the heart of like you know hollywood california and everything so that that um factored into my decision to go there as well um i was looking into berkeley you know college of music in boston i was looking into that one i was looking at mi but uh I'm a Florida guy, so I, I don't like the cold too much. Oh, yeah, I'm in Boston, so I know <laughs> all about that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love I love the North. Like every time we tour, like up in the Boston, New York area, I love going there. But I don't know if I could. Uh, I don't know if I could live there year round and, and put up with the cold that much. It's now. tough. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but no, it was uh, that was kind of just part of it. it was uh, just the vibe of California. My dad and I went out to visit uh, before I ever went to MI. So uh, I just, I had a good vibe and, um, and that's kind of how it, it kind of got me where I am today. So I think it was the right decision. And, um, you know, it's just, it's all about, like you said, the networking and, and the people that you meet. And then on top of that, just the, you know, all the things that it teaches you from all the music theory stuff. And it, uh, it really kind of forces you to practice that much more too, because you're, you're just you're so inspired when you're, when you're put in a room with all those, you know, amazing players and stuff. So. Yeah, I can imagine. And you've been able to play at a lot of awesome venues around the world. Is there one that really stood out to you and you enjoyed the most? Um, well, let's see. I, uh, probably some of the places in Europe, cause that's kind of fresh in my mind. Cause we just did two tours over in Europe and, uh, I think it was about a year ago today we were just almost done with the hailstorm tour over in Europe. And that was like all arenas and stuff like that. So some of the places that we did like in Amsterdam and I want to say like Nottingham, it was like the motor point arenas, I think they were called, but they, that was, uh, those were some of the most just surreal kind of moments, you know, especially when like the lights turn down and everybody, you know, turns their cell phone on cell phone lights on and oh, stuff. Yeah. And you <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah but probably some of those gigs and then obviously some of the big festivals and stuff too were super fun because you're on the same bill as like you know stone temple pilots and metallica and uh just legend after legend after legend so it's uh it's an amazing time because we'll have like an early slot and then after that we can just kind of hang out watch the rest of the band so yeah i would say some of those festivals or some of those um some of the ones in europe but they're all, they're all amazing. Yeah, I can imagine. It's kind of like a surreal feeling for you to get to play alongside, you know, bands that you admire, but then uh, yeah. kind of just stand back and watch as a fan as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. the both worlds. <laughs> That's the both worlds, for sure. COVID has kind of shut down live music. Is there a concert that you recently went to as a fan um, before COVID? Um... Let's see, as a fan, well, it was, I haven't really been to a concert as a fan in a while because we were so busy touring. Right. <laughs> 2018 and 19. So it would probably be back to like, I think 2017, my girlfriend and I went to see uh, Avenged Sevenfold with A Day to Remember. And that was at the, like the Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View. Uh, and that was, that was an amazing concert. But, I can imagine. Yeah, I haven't seen them live yet, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about their shows. Yeah, I'm a really big, you know, Avenged fan. So that was that was actually my first uh, legit show as well. I kind of went to their like album release party at, at um, when they played the roof of uh, Capitol Records because oh, I was like our apartment was literally like walking distance from there, so it was an easy kind of thing. But that was they only played like three or four songs. So the show in Mountain View was like the first time I got to see a real full show. So, um, but yeah, 
after that, we just got so busy with touring and, um, you know, like I said, some of those festivals though, you kind of got to, you kind of got to participate as a fan, you know, me and my drummer, we'd go out there and, and just stand in the crowd and, and watch bands like Def Leppard for free. So, we, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, we're so, we're so lucky that we got to do that. So especially looking, looking back on it now, like, you know, people take that stuff for granted. Um, and it's, it's pretty surreal that we got to just hang out and watch all those bands. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so are you going to just be releasing singles for the time being, or is there an album that will be coming out soon? Yeah, the, all those songs are going to be part of the same album. Um, I guess we just kind of wanted to release them as singles just because of, um, we kind of wanted to keep the momentum going and, and with the modern kind of, uh, the way the industry is now we kind of just wanted to it was kind of our plan to kind of just keep the momentum rolling so we're kind of we're kind of trying to aim for a song a month and there's 10 songs total on on the album so um some of them like three or four of them i had kind of released before but i didn't really market them much and um now i'm with a new uh label intercept music so i'm kind of re-releasing some of those um on the label and kind of combining some of the new ones I wrote too. So it's like, it's a total of 10 songs and we're doing one per month, pretty much like ish, you know, it might be yeah. like a month and a half, two months maybe, but that's kind of what we're aiming for. So. And are some of the songs uh, with vocals or are they all instrumental? This album is just an instrumental album. Uh, we kind of have a lot of stuff, me and my, me and my drummer, James, we kind of have a lot of stuff we're working on. Um, so the album we're putting out right now, we, we had, that's kind of our instrumental project. And then we're doing another album after that with vocals. So that was kind of like the plan was, okay, we'll kind of put all these songs out. And then in the meantime, we'll be kind of silently working on the, the next album. So hopefully there's just no downtime. It's just constantly releasing music. So it's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, I hope, I, I, I hope mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like that's, you know, what a lot of people are doing at the moment because yeah. You no, know, everyone's stuck at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the vocals album is going to be a lot more like straight ahead rock and roll. Like my influences come from like, I'm a big 80s rock guy, you know, like Guns N' Roses. And, oh, yeah. Uh, but I like a lot of the 70s stuff too, like Boston. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm more of a classic rock guy, but kind of still putting like a modern twist on it, trying to kind of fuse the two together a little bit. So it's, it's going to be kind of a lot of stuff like that, just straight ahead kind of. ACDC, but with more of like a modern kind of twist to it. So I love that. Yeah, I'm a big classic rock fan too, as yeah. you can tell with you know Freddie Mercury behind me. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, that's a cool poster. <laughs> yeah, you got a, you got a cool little setup back there. Yeah, uh, I love classic rock, so that's right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm sure I'll exactly. dig your album. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I, I there's just something about it. Music was just written differently back then. It was just so real and um. And also there's just a certain like sonic quality to the imperfections yeah. that you would hear, you know, here and there. And it just, the imperfections made it perfect in my opinion. So, um, some, sometimes today things can get a little too watered down at times. So, uh, but with that said, I do enjoy the modern technology too. So I think it's good to ride that fine line and, and try to kind of have the best of both worlds. And, and that's kind of what we're trying to do. Oh yeah, I agree. Like classic rock, it's just something very distinctive about it that, you know, it stands out and you know, I, I just love all the catchy guitar riffs. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that stuff is timeless and um, it's really interesting. Like I wonder if there's going to ever be a new classic rock. Like have you ever thought about that? Like in 20 years, are we still going to be listening to like Back in Black or is it going to be like, you know, is there going to be a new classic rock it's it's kind of interesting to think about but that's what I i've if, wondered <laughs> like are there could be yeah. new legends <laughs> yeah like is uh i'm trying to think of a good example like you know is avenge sevenfold going to be like classic rock one day or is it just going to be like is it still going to be led zeppelin like i don't know yeah kind of or greta van fleet i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so we'll have to wait know. and see <laughs> yeah exactly so I, maybe I you might be you might be in the, in the new classic rock <laughs> hey, that would be, <laughs> I'd be okay with that that would be amazing so <laughs> are there any musicians that you're kind of dying to collaborate with one day um I haven't put too much thought into that I I, I think um 
once we get our stuff out there and really see kind of where it takes us, it'll be interesting to see what opportunities might, you know, might come our way as far as that goes. But until then, we kind of have to, you know, kind of make our mark doing our thing. We're so, we're still so new with putting out this music. I feel like we have so much stuff in the laptop, but it's like trying to just get it out there and not have, that's the good thing about this off time is like, I don't want to have, I don't want to be that guy that has a bunch of unfinished songs. You know what I mean? So this was a good time to just get things done and, and try to just get it out there. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Austin. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. It was a fun one. We'll have to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. Take care. All right. Appreciate you.